Okay, this morning a novel full of intrigue and deceit, but one so believable that it could almost be ripped right from today's headlines. Unbelievable mm -hmm. coincidence. Uh, Shimmer is about a successful young CEO, a worldwide phenom. The only problem is his whole life, his whole company, is built on a lie. It's the debut novel from Memphis writer Eric Barnes, who is with the Daily News as well. And Eric, the really interesting thing about this is you started writing this 10 years ago, and it's basically it's about a big Ponzi scheme. Yeah. Which just yesterday we saw Bernie Madoff. 150 sent. years. 150 years. Stanford's in the news. Yeah, the, it was a strange coincidence. <laughs> I, I wrote the original draft during the dot com era and the kind of that the, the, the startup companies that were going on and how some of them were pretty uh, thin and uh, <laughs> maybe not, you know. Uh, Built on a solid foundation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so that was sort of my inspiration for the original draft of it. And then when the publisher bought it a year ago, the Madoff story came out and then the Stanford story and, you know, the timing was um, um, surprising. <laughs> yeah, like, like it. His whole life is a lie kind of explain what that means without giving away too much. Sure. No, he has built a company that originally uh, was built on a premise of a, a, a technology that no one else had, um, and actually he and his cousin developed, and then they get carried away and realize that the technology doesn't work, and rather than just backing up, they find a way to go forward. And, and, and pretend that it works. And pretend that it works. Everybody and as works. long as they keep growing, they'll be okay. And the book starts at a point where they are starting to kind of hit the wall of what they can do um, to unwind what they started. How easy was it for you, Eric, to kind of pull the pieces together of this novel? Um, I was working at a, a kind of a high-tech startup company at the time and meeting with a lot of venture capitalists and raising money and investors. And, um, you know, I'd tell a story that I, uh, I would be in a meeting and they would ask you where you went to school. And I would say I had... Uh, 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 an MFA from Columbia, and they'd say, oh, an MBA. The, the Columbia's got a great business school. And I would correct, I would say, no, I said an MFA. And they'd say, MBA, they yeah, got great. And there was this dynamic of them hearing what they wanted to hear. Wow. And a dynamic of them believing what they wanted to believe. So and if you had been crooked, you yeah, could have done this absolutely. in real life. You could yeah. have sold them sure. on the technology absolutely. for your... That's absolutely. amazing to me. Yeah. Is that just human nature that... I, I guess so. You know, you that will to believe and that desire to make money. And so, you know, if you're talking to investors and you're talking to uh, people who want to make money off you, they want to hear that they can make money off you. Mm -hmm. And particularly at that time, in the dot-com era, everyone was making so much money that everyone was feeling left out. So they really right. did right. want to hear what they wanted right. to do. They wanted to think, jump on the train. Right. And the stock market was the same thing, where people were making so much money that you wanted to believe you could make that much more money. You know? so. We were talking earlier, you know, you, you kind of wrote about, you know, this took place during the dot-com period. Right. Do you enjoy writing about what's kind of out there in the headlines? Uh, I mean, currently speaking, what's... I, I, I think... No, I don't know. I don't know. This was, I don't know that I'll ever write something this timely again. This was <laughs> such a coincidence. I mean, it was not intended to be that timely. And so uh, I, I don't know that that will happen again. Um, the, the book I'm wrapping up is about a bankrupt bill collector. Um, unfortunately, with the economy being so bad, I'm sort of timely again. Because, but I really didn't mean it that way because I started that knack. back. Yeah, I know. You just I, have this right, knack about exactly. doing things. We want to yeah. yeah. see your office. And you know, he may have a crystal ball. No, I think he does. So, you don't, you're not working on anything like the broadcast media going completely bust. Definitely are you? And all not. talk shows no. being. Okay. No, and all newspapers are going to be. What a feel better. <laughs> I think we all do. What a relief. Um, you, how do you, you write for a living, I mean, well, you don't write for a living with the Daily News, right. but you manage a yes. very um, busy, busy project, right. constant deadlines, you have four children, right. how do you have time to, and energy to write? It, it's, it's a lack of sleep, There's a, you know, <laughs> if I could just want, you read about those generals, I'm always gen jealous, they talk about generals in Iraq and Afghanistan who get, up, get by three hours sleep, I can't do three, <laughs> but I can get down to about six hours sleep, so I write very early in the morning, very late at night. Is it a, com time. a compelling thing? I mean, you just have to write? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I, I've always enjoyed writing. I, I got I originally got a job as a reporter, really, to have a job, pay the bills while I was writing. I got a little carried away with the job and you know, became a <laughs> publisher eventually. But um, yeah, I've always wanted to write. I always enjoyed it. And What's the process like for you? I mean, is it something that you can kind of knock out very quickly, or is it a very methodic uh, effort does it take a year or two or it longer? It probably took, although I started this 10 years ago, it, it, it was probably two years of work over that time. I know that sounds strange. I, I write every day for months and, and just the routine is very important to me and then I'll maybe take a break. 
Um, and I'm a, an erratic writer. I write out of order. I write chapters. Really? I write the end before I write the beginning. I uh, don't know how it's going to end when I start. You know, um, your your MFA teachers wouldn't be too happy with you with all that, would they? <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I, 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 the MFA was a great program in part because you realize people have so many different ways of writing. And so uh, Nabokov, for instance, wrote on on uh, index cards and shuffled the cards. He just wrote and he, he are had, you serious? Yeah, he completely wrote completely out of order. You can go to the really? if you ever look at the manuscript of Lolita, for instance, it's a it's a series of boxes of index cards. And he wrote in pen. And so it's actually, everyone has so a different way of writing. they would be happy yeah. with you. Yeah, some would, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> Amazing. I'm impressed. Absolutely. So I got to know, what, what you mentioned that it had just come out, or it had gone to the publisher just as the Bernie Madoff yeah, story sure. broke. Did your publisher or your agent call you and go, cha <laughs> I think we got something here. <laughs> no, you know, I, I think they were happy and they are happy. There was even though a little bit of suspicion uh, on the part of, of, not of them, but of booksellers right. and, and reviewers that, well, wait, is this some fly-by-night book that, you know, somebody whipped together? And so, you know, in some ways <laughs> you, you can be too timely. And, uh, they, they, they're a little skeptical, but no, wow. it's been great. Uh, the timing has, has been great. It's we can't wait to have, have your second one. A lot of folks talking for right. sure. And when you get the inspiration for the third one, please call us. So that well, we'll know what's going to yeah, happen sure. 10 years in the Absolutely. future. We do Absolutely. want to tell you about Eric Barnes' book signing. It is tonight, 6 o'clock. The location, Davis Kid Booksellers on Perkins Extended. EricBarnes.net is where you can catch Eric on the World Wide Web. Thank you, Eric. Crazy. Congratulations. So Thank you. Thanks Keep for that crystal me. ball close by. Right. Yeah. We need to know what's going on. We would well. never be that good <laughs> or lucky tell you or what, smart. Always have the new. Uh, we're going to be smart because of what we're about to eat. That's true. The best salad and fall recipes for your July 4th that you could ever find anywhere hands down. Coming up.